Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen and this is Small Ships, a mod that adds in a whole bunch of, well, small ships. And I'm going to be showing you today how you can craft these, how they work, and how you can customize them to your own desires. You should start off by knowing that there are four main types of ships. I have them kind of decked out out there, but then we also have the plain oak styles just up here that have not been customized at all as well. They each have a very simple recipes actually. You just need to have a lot of leads on hand to make your armada to start with, which may or may not be helpful. Uh, you'll need sails, of course, because all of these ships will have some kind of sail option on it, which is just consisting of some kind of wool, logs, and more leads. On top of that, you'll need a bunch of boats. But that was just showing you one of the styles. There are several to choose from. There's the cog, the brig, which requires boats with chests, the galley, which requires boats and chests separate, and the Dracar, which requires something very similar as well, just a little bit extra string. Between those rather simple recipes, you should be able to assemble quite a fleet if you so want to. Now these are excellent for sea travel as well as storage. You will need a large open place in order to set one of these down, so if you're trying to place it somewhere on land, it might be a little bit more inconvenient. Instead, make sure that you're well out into the water. You might even have better luck just getting out in the water when doing it. To give you an idea, all of the different ships have the same size hitbox on it, which is not as big as you might think. The entire ship is not traversable in its current state, but you should be able to at least walk around on the middle part of it, as well as just jump off relatively easily. This is also the area that you're going to want to interact with if you have any interactions with putting things on or taking things off of your ship. Just standing on here is actually fine, but as soon as I reach the edge of that bounding box, I will fall through. That being said, there are lots of other options that you can do with all of the boats, and that is, for starters, you can name them. For instance, I have this cog here, let's walk over, and when I look at it in the bottom left, you can see that the mod I have installed called the One Probe is identifying this as a cog. If I right click on it to actually get mounted into it, it even says the name of the ship is cog. If I press sneak to unmount, then I can actually just click on here with a name tag, and then when I look at it again, it says the name of it is Comment. And this is one way of naming your ship so that you know which one it is. And as you can see in the bottom left, it actually says so in the actual uh, tool tip as well. Now there are also nine different colors of ships. For example, just looking up the cog, I've got all of these different styles here. I have some of them already out in place. Mangrove, dark oak, cherry, and just plain old oak. Now you notice that some of those sails have been dyed. All you need to do is try and find that bounding box of your ship and right click on it with the appropriate dye and all of the sails and rigging will end up being dyed in the appropriate color of your choice. On top of that, you can also add in a banner, which doesn't sit the way you might think. You notice how they're actually kind of sitting sideways. Uh, I have here the ominous banner, so keep in mind when I click on here, it will kind of fly it sideways. So you might have to kind of customize your uh, flag or banner making a little bit more. You can also attach a lead to your boat and tie it up. Uh, you can also use it to actually kind of steal someone else's boats. If someone is driving a boat or mounted in it, you will not be able to actually drag it around with a lead. But if, if it's an empty boat, you actually should be able to and you can kind of do some acts of piracy in that case and steal their ships. Also something you should be aware of, if the weather starts getting a little bit, I don't know, rocky, well, so do the boats. They will start to do a little bit of listing and moving back and forth in the water just to add a little bit of realism, but it isn't anything that you need to worry about. So let's talk more about how you can interact with your ship. By sneak right-clicking, you can access the ship's storage, and that may vary depending upon the ship you have, if you have a, a lot or a little. You might even have multiple pages. If you have entities nearby that you also want to mount into a ship, they can feasibly just walk right into it, as you can see here. Uh, alternately, you can just right-click on the entity. But in order to right-click on the entity, you have to be seated while doing so. So then I just do this, and I grab that guy before he jumps in the other boat, and now he's on my boat. And this also works for different animals and creatures like that. Now, if you don't want the uh, entity to be mounted on your boat, per se, uh, let's say I accidentally clicked on one while I was jumping in there, you can just get up, off the ship, and right-click to unmount them. 
then they might still be able to uh, walk around on your ship a little bit and may reseat themselves again. Just make sure that you get them out of the way. Now there's more to make than just the different ships themselves. There's also, well, weaponry. Cannons to be specific. These will not work on land, they only currently work on the ships. They are made with three blocks of iron, a piece of string, and some different types of wood, whichever you desire. All you need to do is just right click to mount them on the ship, and you can add as many as the ship can hold. In this case, it holds four. Not all ships will have cannons allowable to be mounted. In the case of the Drakkar, which is more of a Viking vessel, you will instead have the option of adding shields. Just by right clicking, you can add those as well. Now if you don't want shields or your cannons on your ship, maybe it's ruining your aesthetic, just aim for that hitbox in the middle, right click, and your different cannons, or in this case shields, will just pop off and you can then pick them up when you're ready. So now that we've got the basics of that, let's actually get out of this port. Knowing that I have a small hitbox and no way of actually doing a reverse with any of these ships, I can then just turn around using the A and D keys, and then I can press W to go forward, right? Well, maybe. Only if you have a boat that has oars will you automatically be able to go forward. Alternately, you can press R and you will release the sails, which then will just start slowly moving your ship forward and you can then just aim it as you like. When you're ready to actually go faster, just hold down or press again the W key to move forward. And then once you reach full speed, your boat's sail will then just start unfurling completely. Opening up your inventory menu, you then have your different information about the ship that you're currently using. In order to stop that, just press the R key again and you'll automatically close the sail. And of course, you can also turn around as you need to. With the uh, hitboxes of each of the ships being just kind of a, a square, it sh it's not really too bad in order to do so in most situations. Now if you also just want to reduce your speed, you can press W or to go forward and S to bring the sail back up one level. Uh, but there is kind of a, a slight cooldown, and just about all this stuff is uh, very configurable in the, uh, in the mod configs. Now at the time of this video, there is currently a bug preventing this from happening, but I imagine it will be fixed in a future uh, version, and that is the different types of boats will have different speed benefits depending upon the biome that they're currently in. Whether it be warm or cold, they will gain a benefit or a negative in their speed. All the ships except for the pink one are cold water ships and gain a benefit in their speed when using that. The pink one actually gains a speed boost in warm biomes, like I'm in now with a lukewarm ocean. If you want to change the view while sailing, simply use your mouse wheel to scroll and you can actually change how far or close you are to your ship's view. If you want something more realistic, of course you can press F5, but it can make things a little bit more challenging. But be aware there's also collision damage. It's not a lot, but it's enough that you can actually start damaging one's ship You'll also likely do some damage to some of the different uh, entities while you're crashing into the ship. So something you're going to want to be a little bit, uh, well, cautious of or maybe take advantage of. As your ship storage fills up, you'll also notice that there is a little bit of storage showing up on your ship. Depending upon how much you have on here, you could also incur a speed reduction in how fast your ship goes. Up to 10% can be reduced for a full cargo, plus 2.5% can be reduced for each time that you add a cannon to your ship. So a heavily laden warship might actually go a bit slower than somebody without any kind of weaponry on their, sh on their uh, ship. In order to fire cannons that you've mounted on your ship, you'll actually need a little bit of extra something. And that is going to be cannonballs, of course, because you can't really shoot anything if you don't have anything to shoot. But in order to fire things, you need to look off of one side or the other. For instance, I'm looking off the left side of my ship. Just by pressing the space bar and holding it down, I fire two shots of the cannon. On the other side, if I look the other way, does the same thing. But you'll notice that sometimes the shots will be randomly shot in an area. They won't always consist in the same area. And if you want to actually have it aim farther, you'll want to look in a different area. This is where it's actually best to kind of look right where your cannon is when you want to have it shooting in a certain direction. If you aim too high, it can go way over your target 
and launch far into the distance. If you look too low, then, well, it might just miss your ship altogether, uh, trying to aim a little bit too off. But if you aim just right, you can hit the ship and you'll start seeing some damage once it gets to a, about half its uh, health rating. All right, so let's say that you're on a ship, it is badly damaged, you're worried about losing it and perhaps its contents. What do you do? Well, you're going to need iron nuggets and some kind of planks. It doesn't matter what kind of wood as long as it's a plank. You'll need to have both of those in your inventory. You'll need to hold onto the iron nuggets specifically, and then you just right click on your ship and it will start repairing it. Now, if you mount in the ship, you can see here it says damage 56%. If I unmount from this and I use this, do it a bunch and then right click, you can see it's reduced down to 27%. Now, if your ship is sunk, that's something else. Don't think that you can just punch your ship in order to pick it up. It, once it's placed, it's pretty much going to stay there until it's destroyed. If your ship is sunk, it's pretty much sunk. But you can still salvage something from it. That is, any of the interior contents from the storage or the hold, uh, you can still access that and drag out anything that you need. So you're definitely going to want to take care of your ship or else you may lose it. Now, it's gone pretty much permanently and after 15 minutes it will despawn upon which time any of the contents will then just float to the surface uh, or sink to the bottom depending upon what kind of contents they are but they will just pop out of where the ship was and then eventually those will despawn as well if the area is loaded now there's another little something that you're going to want to watch out for and that is natural hazards uh, there are possibilities of magma uh, that you're going to want to make sure that you just kind of get out of the way of if you can't make it in time and your ship does sink, just be aware that as long as your ship has health, you should still be able to get it to float. So if you break those magma blocks, then you should be able to sail salvage your ship and it will float again to the surface. Now let's talk about the different types of ships now that you've got the ins and outs of just about all of how to sail. This is a cog, what we've been running around in for the most part during this entire time. It has 300 health. It is sail propelled only. It does not have oars. It has a top out speed of around 28 kilometers per hour, uh, and it can hold up to five crew. It has 108 storage slots, as you saw there. It had two pages worth, and it can hold up to four cannons. It has an average rotation acceleration, which means that it's it's all around kind of like a, your average ship. It has a, a little bit of pluses and minuses, nothing that it really excels at here. Then you've got your galley. That's this one here that I'm currently kind of taking a cruise with my uh, <laughs> little workforce here. No, you don't need to have them in order to man the oars, but it does make it a little bit more realistic. Uh, just make sure that you turn their volume down so that you're not too uh, annoyed by it. But the, the galley has 200 health, it is sail and oar propelled, but it has only got a max speed of 33 kilometers per hour with just the sail. But you can get an extra 20 at this time from uh, being able to row. Now I'm not sure if that's fully intended because that, that's a, a full like above 50 kilometers per hour with this one, but it doesn't exactly hold a lot either. It can have up to nine crew, 54 storage slots, so it doesn't store very much, and it can only hold two cannons. It has a low rotation acceleration as well, so it's more or less just meant for top speed, carrying some crew, and a little bit of defense. Now the advantage of having a sail on your ship is that you can pretty much just turn it on, and I am no longer holding the uh, keyboard, it's, it's just kind of doing it by itself. But if I just give it that extra oomph of uh, the W key for them to start paddling, then it does give that extra boost of speed that you might might need if you're being chased down by someone else. Now the brig is this fantastically large ship. It has a lot of health. It has 400 hit points. It is sail propelled only, but believe me, that's pretty adequate as it is. Uh, and it can has a top speed of 45 kilometers per hour just with the sail, so it has a really good automatic speed on it. Uh, it can hold up to 11 crew, 162 storage spots, and 6 cannons. It has a low rotation acceleration, so that means it, it doesn't really turn quickly like some of the other ones do but uh, or at least handle but it is really impressive with its firepower that it can actually muster here so for example 
In case you didn't already know, cannons will affect the landscape as well, so you could feasibly mine your way into somebody's base. And last but not least, we've got the Drakkar. This one here is quite impressive and very different from most of the other ones. It has 10 removable shield slots. Of course, just aim at the center and right click with an ax to remove those. And uh, that will definitely reduce the amount of damage that you have. It will uh, reduce it by a large percentage. I believe it's up to 30% shield re uh, reduction with the shields, depending upon how many you add in there. And that's straight up damage reduction. So it effectively can give it on average, like maybe another third of its uh, health bar um, on top of what it already has of 200 hit points. It is sail and or propelled. So if I get in this, you can just turn it on and have both going. The sail itself is a good 27 kilometers per hour, and it has an extra 13 kilometers per hour for going with the uh, oars. It is actually got some special abilities as well, but you might wonder where are the cannons? It doesn't have any, you can't fit any, but it will fit 11 crew and 54 storage slots. It's more a raiding vessel. It has a high rotation acceleration, which means you have extra control over your rotation compared to the other ships. More importantly, it has this ice breaking ability where you just press against any kind of ice in the area and any of it that is level with where it is currently in the water, it will start breaking, which can be really nice if you've got yourself a nice frozen river, for example, that you're trying to traverse down. Now you can use this in combination with some friends, they can follow you closely behind and perhaps take advantage of your ice breaking ability. And with that, I think that finishes off this bit by bit on small ships, a fantastically immersive little mod that adds a lot of fun to sea exploration. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, don't be afraid to stop by on Twitch where we stream regularly. Till next time, folks, I'll see ya.